Good evening, comrades and friends who are here. Um, I'm sure every, every one of you must have heard the news about the death of the leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. But you didn't just get the news. You got it packaged in a wave of imperialist propaganda against the DPRK. I will get to that in a minute, but what I want to really focus on tonight is trying to define for us the problem of Korea from the point of view of the imperialists and from the point of view of the tasks of our movement, and especially we as communists, as, as those fighting for the liberation of humanity through the elimination of capitalism, the building of socialism. How do we deal with the Korea question? Now, it's, it's very easy, I think, to summarize the problem of Korea in terms of US imperialism. For them, the problem is this. How can they crush the Korean Revolution? That's what they've been trying to do for 66 years. 66 years. Ever since 1945, when the US first rushed its troops to Korea to take command there in the South, they were in the South, as the Japanese Empire was crumbling at the end of World War II. These US troops occupied the South, but they had ambitions that they would soon take over the North as well. How, and I now bear with me because we have to go into a little history in order to understand accurately what these problems are all about. Because you see, in the North, it wasn't like in the South, there was an indigenous liberation movement that was based among the people. Soviet troops helped this movement, which was led by Kim Il-sung, to defeat the Japanese colonial rulers in the North. Now, Kim Il-sung was like, for people of uh, a more recent generation, he was like the Ho Chi Minh of Korea. That's who he was. He had been organizing against the colonial oppressors since he was a teenager. And his revolutionary guerrilla army aided the workers and farmers to set up their own councils in order to take the power away from the Japanese colonial rulers and the collaborators that they had among the ruling classes within Korea, especially the bourgeoisie and the landlords. So what was going on in the North at the end of World War II was a people's revolution led by Kim Il-sung, who was a Korean communist. But the people throughout Korea when the war ended wanted to reunite their country and, they, and rebuild it. So an agreement was made between the US and the Soviet Union that their troops would withdraw from Korea within three years so Korea could become a reunited country. And the Soviet Union withdrew its troops in 1948 from the North, as had been scheduled. But the US, still 66 years later, has tens of thousands of troops in the South. Now that same year, 1948, the US sabotaged the whole concept that Korea would be reunified. They picked a stooge named Syngman Rhee, who had sat out the war in the United States. He was not somebody who was fighting an anti-colonial struggle. He was in the US. And they anointed him as president of what they called the newly created Republic of Korea, which was the South Korea, 
So there was a state now, a separate state set up. It was only after that betrayal by the US of the plans that had existed to bring about reunification between the North and the South. It was only after that that the revolutionary forces in the North declared that they were founding the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Now just two years after that happened, the US invaded the North in an all-out war. They claimed the North started it. They were ready for that war for a long time. The uh, Secretary of State of the US at the time actually went to the, mili the military line between the two countries and had himself photographed with a, you know, a, a, a rifle and a, a binoculars and all that looking at the North. They were ready, they were preparing for it. The Truman administration in this, this war that lasted for three years, they eventually sent hundreds of thousands of US troops to Korea. They bombed every building in the North that stood above one story. US pilots would come back with their bombs still intact in their, you know, in their, in their hold because they couldn't find any more targets. They had bombed every bridge, every building, every temple, everything. However, and this is what is so important to know about what underlies the, the horrendous hostility of the US ruling class and its institutions to the DPRK. The fierce resistance of the Korean People's Army was able to inflict incredible blows on the mighty Pentagon. Do you know that the Koreans were the only people to ever have captured a US Army general? His name was General William Dean, and he was captured by the Koreans during that war. They also made US troops uh, have to make the biggest, or the longest strategic withdrawal in the history of the US military. 78 miles they had to withdraw from deep inside the North to below the military demarcation line. Um, the Marine Corps General at the time, Major General Oliver Smith, tried to explain it this way. This is a famous quote. We're not retreating. We are just advancing in a different direction. <laughs> but you can feel in this general's words how the outcome of the Korean War, after pouring so much into this, was a humiliating defeat for US imperialism. You, at the end of World War II, the US viewed themselves as the supreme power over the whole Pacific region. We have to get into their minds and see how they, what they, were, how they were looking at Korea. The Cold War started, you know, in 46, really, but it became a hot war in Korea in 1950. And with that, the US thought they were gonna roll back the revolutionary movements throughout Asia, not only in Korea, but everywhere that the people were in motion. The Philippines, Malaya, Indonesia, Indochina, all of Indochina, and of course, China itself. That was their, that was how they looked at Korea, that it was strategic to their plan for the American century and, and dominance over the whole Pacific region. But it didn't happen. They didn't win this war the way they had planned it. They killed millions of people. Three to four million Koreans died in that war. It's, incom it's really incomprehensible for us to understand the conditions that the Korean people went through. Not even the most oppressed in this country have been through that level of complete and utter attempt to just destroy them and wipe them off the face of the, 